whole lot about taking up profit, but I tell you what, some, a lot of you guys are going to train, I think, at 5 o'clock, and I think we're getting, we're getting late, so. Why don't you ask me some questions, if anybody has any questions, or if there's anything you want me to talk about to clarify. Yes? What about panic? Panic? <laughs> when you feel like you're on the edge of panic, you should just step back. No, I'm going to give a position on it. If you're in a position of indecision and you have a position on, remember that indecision is a decision, okay? If you have a bad position on, you want to get out of that position because you don't want it to drain your resources, okay? So you got a position on, and you can feel it in your stomach and you say, Jesus, something's wrong, okay? Now, how do you avoid that real panic you feel? Well, number one, when you're a new trader, you sure as hell don't trade when the number's coming out and you don't have a position on, okay? Because that's when you move the most. You don't trade between 10.35 and 10.45 when you're a new trader because the Fed comes into the bond market and does something, okay? And you don't want to be involved if uh, they do unexpected mass sales. Uh, and you never want to be the wrong way when somebody's going to make an unexpected comment on the news services. <laughs> That's one of my rules. When you feel panic coming on, I'd like to say just step back and, 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 and figure out what's going on. But I think what happens is, you know, there's so much that we don't use in terms of our talents. Something somewhere inside of you is telling you to get the hell out of this trade, okay? And do it. And just execute it and get out. So, but remember this too. I feel you have to have a reason for getting in a trade, okay? You have to really have a reason for getting in a trade. And you have to have a reason to get out. And when you're a good enough trader, you can stand there and remember what everybody's, everybody's goal, okay, is to be the eye in the center of the hurricane. You stand in a commodity spin and it's a hurricane, okay? And it's far around you. You're like this. You're right in the middle of the hurricane. And you say, yeah, I want to sell that guy at yeah, I want to buy five from that guy, and I want to sell to him at six. You want to be the eye in the center of the hurricane. You want to avoid the panic. That's everybody's goal. We have to be the center of calm, okay? The only way you develop that is with time spent in the pit with positions on. And nothing breeds, nothing breeds success like success. Nothing does away with a feeling of panic like having enough success where you know, even if, if I have a bad feeling in my stomach about this trade and I want to get out, I know that that's not the end of my week. I know I'm going to have another opportunity. Huh? Not even a question. Uh, six minutes seven. You buy ten at six. Uh, what's been happening in the bonds lately is say uh, it goes sellers and there's, it's five bid for three hundred, and you think, well, it's five bid for three hundred. Six is my tra you know trade. I might be able to scratch this. And all of a sudden, the fives are gone. Are, are you saying immediately? Get out at five, and then if they're gone, I mean, are you immediately out, out at four? Or? I, I'm not an advocate of one take losses. I'm an advocate of being mechanical when you walk in the pit. When I walk in the pit, now, that was just for contradiction. When I walk in the pit, I'm a new trader. I say to myself, I'm taking a one take loss, okay? And I am. I'm going to take a one take loss unless the situation presents itself where I don't. What I'm saying is this every trade has to be analyzed on its own merits, okay? I'm long at six. I'm long 10 at 6. I have to analyze that trade. Do I want to be long 10 at 6 or not? Okay? Theoretically, if I say I don't want to be long at 10 at 6, I'm out at 6. Okay? I can't get out at 6. Now I'm long 10 at 6. It's 5 bit at 6. I want to analyze the trade. Okay? It's 5 bit at 6. Forget about the 10 I'm long at 6. Do I want to be long at 5 or do I want to be short at 6? Okay? You're saying, you look at the situation over and you say, I'm long 10 at 6, but by God, if I can get 10 at 5, i got a damn good chance of selling 6s and making a profit on this thing, okay? So you buy your 10 at 5. Now, you're only going to get your 10 at 5 if everybody else thinks you're wrong, okay? Or if somebody else thinks you're wrong, all right? So you have to start questioning yourself then, okay? If you're wrong 10 at 6 and 10 at 5, if your puke mechanism hasn't, hasn't come into effect, then it better come into effect. You better say to yourself, I'm going to sell 4s unless... Alan Greenspan's nephew walks into the pit and starts buying fives and sixes. <laughs> you gotta get out. You gotta get out. The reason why you gotta get out is because you were wrong. You were wrong. Now, when you bought those sixes, you have to look at it in the context of everything. Remember, I was talking about that too. Why did I get sixes? Is the rest of the world long at six? What are the outside markets doing? What are the houses doing? Okay. Why did he give me ten at six? Why are all these people in the pit did he sell me ten at six? Why, why was I lucky enough to get ten at six? There are days, weeks, months, and years when I feel like the only reason why I got sixes is because God knew they were no good, okay? So he sold them. So somebody sells me 10 and 6 because I knew they knew they were no good, okay? There are days when you're not going to be trading well. Everything you get turns to garbage. And those days become good days for you when you exist.
exemplify a good trader when you can take those days and minify it. Minify your losses. That's a registered trademark of LIT America, okay? I think if you bought sixes and you thought they were okay and you bought fives and you thought they were okay, now it's five sellers in your case, you've got to step back and say real quickly, you know, maybe I just don't have a feel for this particular market. Why don't I get out and start over, okay? So you get out. So how do you get out? See a 20 to 4? Absolutely not. Who's a 4 bid? Who needs him? Who's going to say he's the best guy in the world because he sold me 20 to 4? If I'm going to take a loss, that's who I'll take it with. Or you sell 10 at 4. Let's see if that starts the avalanche. Or you sell 10 at 4 and, and it's 5 bid right back in your face. Okay? Have a reason for doing everything you do. How do you know you're a good trader? Here's how you know you're a good trader, okay? You buy 10 at 6. You're long 10 at 6. It goes 6 sellers, 5 bid. You're ready to sell the 5s. Boom, it's 6 bid. You say, I'm long 10 at 6. I want to be long at 6. There's 500 bid, okay? The locals are short. The brokers are buying it. Uh, the outside market is supporting my position. I'm long 10 at 6. What do I do, okay? Do I stand there and I'm the lone wolf in the, in the, in the wilderness going, sell tents? Excuse me. I haven't had a pop in four days. I get excited just thinking about being long at six. <laughs> <laughs> do you say, sell ten at seven? Sell ten at seven? Sell ten at seven? You're the only idiot in the world offering ten at seven? Or do you say, okay, here's the market. You know what? I'd like to be long at six. All I want to do is buy sixes in your long ten already. Six for twenty. Six for 20, boom, seven bid. Instead of puking, you take a look at the market, okay? And you remember now, all this stuff has to happen fast. And the longer you have a position out in the pit, the faster it happens. Now you're long at seven. Do I want to sell 10 at eight, get out of my position? Do I want to buy 10 at seven? Well, guess what? You bid seven, all of a sudden you got 20 at seven. They got 10 at six and 20 at seven, you just added to a winner. What a feeling that is. That's the best feeling in the world. Okay, now you're long 30. Eight bit. Okay, well you don't like eight bit because they're 500 off at nine. Okay, so you're long 30. First thing you do is sell 30 at eight to a broker. Okay, you sell them 30 at eight. He buys 70 at nine. Okay, you're a 10 lot trader. All of a sudden you're short 70 at nine. All right, you're 500 there. Now because you've had positions on, all right, and your grandfather owned a uh, major railway. Southwest United States, you can afford to have a position not like that, all right? You say, I'm short 70 at 9, all right? Do I want to be short at 9, or do I want to, or do I say, I bet in 70 should be a good number, okay? Let's see. Take the zero off. You're short 7 at 9, which seems like the national debt of Ethiopia sometimes, okay? You're short 7 at 9. Do I want to be short 7 at 9, or before I can move, do I say, pop my 9 at 9, okay? Because I want to get out of that trade now and short 2 at 9. When you're a good trader, you say, I'm short 7 at 9, my unit is 1, or my unit is 2, but guess what? I'm short seven at nine, and I've identified where I can get out. I know where I can get out. I'm short seven at nine. Now, I may want to scream eight for seven like a banshee, or I may want to say nothing and fold my arms and see if the market starts going back my way. Okay? So the way you become a good trader and the way you know you're a good trader is that first day you add to a winner. And let me tell you something. There are a lot of guys that have traded for a long time that have never added to a winner. Now, there's two ways to add to a winner. You're long 10 at 6, and you say, you know, I want to I want to be long at 6. I'm comfortable. So instead of saying sell 10 at 7 like this, okay, spooking the market or, or being the only idiot in the world offering 10 at 7, and the whole pit knows that if you buy 10 at 6, they're available at 7 or 6 or 5 right away because you're going to puke. You say 6 for 10, and just because I'm short and I don't need any balls, I'll say 10 at 6. Okay, now you're long 20 at 6. 6 for 10. Nothing feels better than that. And all of a sudden it goes seven bid, and you've added to a winner. Or it's, you buy sixes and you buy sevens, you buy it's ever clip, you know, 